Welcome to day one of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to 3D model a Lego block. You'll learn how to organize files, change units, create a sketch, extrude an object, utilize patterns, and shell objects. To start off, let's go to the data panel and create a new project folder and title it Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. It's important to keep your files organized in Fusion 360, or it will become cumbersome and hard to find the files you are looking for later on. Now, if you've played with Legos before, you're likely familiar with how small a standard 2x4 Lego brick is. Because it's a fairly small object, we'll want to make sure we model it in millimeters instead of inches. Under the Fusion 360 menu, you'll see the Preferences option. It's here that we can change the default units for the design. Simply select millimeters or MM for the abbreviation and click OK. Now these changes will only apply to new files, so to ensure it takes place, let's go ahead and open up a new tab. To create our Lego block, we'll need to create a new sketch. In CAD or 3D modeling programs, sketches are two-dimensional drawings of shapes that we can turn into three-dimensional shapes. Under the sketch menu, you'll notice there are a bunch of different predetermined shapes to help save us time. Now for the Lego brick, we'll start off by clicking on the rectangle. Then we'll choose the top plane. As you drag out the rectangle, you'll notice dimension boxes pop up. We'll type in the width of 15.8 millimeters, hit the tab key, and then type in 31.8 millimeters for the length. After that, we'll always hit the enter key to submit the dimensions and to exit out of the feature. Now that we have a two dimensional rectangle, we need to make it three dimensional by extruding it. The extrude feature can be selected from the toolbar or we can hit the keyboard shortcut letter E. After activating the extrude feature, we select the shape and type in the height of 9.6 millimeters. Now, if you're connected to the internet, Fusion 360 will automatically back up your files, but clicking the save icon will save versions of it, which allows you to go back to a specific version later on. So let's go ahead and hit the save icon in the application bar and title our project Lego. You'll also notice that it displays the version number next to the title name. Now we need to create the bumps on the top of the Lego. To do this, we'll draw a circle on the top, which will automatically create a new sketch on top of our block. Make the circle dimension five millimeters. Now, hit the keyboard shortcut D, which is short for dimension. Then we'll click the center of the circle and the outside of the rectangle. We can do this in both directions, and for both dimensions, we'll enter 3.9 millimeters. At this point, we could go ahead and draw all of the other circles one by one, but it would be much more efficient to use the rectangle pattern sketch feature. After activating the feature, simply select the circle and drag the circle over to the right. Now you'll see that we can type in negative 24 millimeters for the distance and four for the number of total circles. Drag the other arrow down and enter eight millimeters for the distance and two for the number of circles. Now we'll select each circle, hit E on the keyboard and enter 1.7 millimeters to extrude them. We now need to make the recess at the bottom of the Lego brick. Use the view cube in the upper right hand corner to look at the bottom of the brick and select shell from the modify drop down list. The shell feature helps us hollow out three dimensional objects. We'll select the object and type in 1.49 millimeters. Now that we've shelled our object out, we need to create the three center columns on the bottom of the Lego that allow Legos to snap into one another. We'll start off by hitting the keyboard shortcut C to create circles where the top circles were. You'll notice as you click and drag, the circles will snap to the same size. 
Then we'll draw a line across the circles to find our center point. Now that we have our center point, we can draw a circle to snap to the edge of the other circles. To create the inner part of the circle, I'll go ahead and use the offset feature by calling it with the keyboard shortcut O. We'll offset the circle by one millimeters and then we'll use the pattern tool again to make all three circles. You can punch in 16 millimeters for the distance and three for the number of circles. Now, as I'm working with sketches, I like to trim unwanted lines out of the way so the file doesn't seem messy if I go back to edit it later on. To do this, I'll use the T keyboard shortcut for trim to select the line and trim it out. Then I'll hit E to extrude the three circles 8.1 millimeters. Now, if we revolve the Lego around, you'll see that we have completed the overall Lego brick shape. The last thing we'll want to do is add a fillet or rounded edges, making sure that the edges aren't sharp. The fillet command can be activated from the modify dropdown list or by the F keyboard shortcut. To fillet objects, we'll simply select the lines we want to fillet and add a fillet of 0.2 millimeters. And there you have it. You've successfully 3D modeled a Lego brick in Fusion 360. I'll see you in the next lesson where I'll walk you through the Revolve feature as we 3D model a beer bottle.